गुड मॉर्निंग एवरीबडी सो आई एम दिनेश कुमार आर एंड लेट अस कंटिन्यू विद द क्लास दैट वी वर हैंडलिंग हियर एज पार्ट ऑफ वर्ल्ड क्लाइमेटिक रीजन्स सो आई होप थिंग्स आर फाइन एम आई ऑडिबल एम आई विजिबल यस सो लेट अस स्टार्ट विद द क्लास सो द टॉपिक इज वर्ल्ड क्लाइमेटिक रीजन्स सो आई एम दिनेश कुमार आर if you guys like my class you can follow me on the unacademy profile here next before starting the course a small announcement uh regarding unacademy courses so at present we know that on 27th we have the prelims examination so we are just left with 6 month so for that for the prelims examination unacademy has come up with exclusive prelims batch which will go for 6 month and the class is starting tomorrow 21st december and this is 6 month course now there are various opportunities here what i can say is these classes the 6 month exclusive prelims classes are dealt by dealt by the top educators of an academy and this prelims courses are for three categories one those who are writing for this prelims 2021 next a full batch course for prepare for the students preparing for 2022 and there is a full batch course for the college goers who are final year students and expect to write their examination on 2000 in 2023 so these are the three batches that is on with respect to an academy now so yes i am repeating again the ultimate gs batch which is a full Uh, uh i can say 100% completion course with respect to prelims examination and please remember a small reminder it is not a crash course it is not a crash course it is a complete course for prelims and it is starting tomorrow and the languages this uh, ultimate batch will be in bilingual language but there are other batches which are exclusively in hindi and english batches they are all starting tomorrow so you can decide about joining these batches and uh, if you decide you have to uh, decide to join you have to subscribe to the plus courses i will be giving you the uh, explanation on how to join the plus courses so these are the courses for students who are writing in 2022 same three language it is also starting tomorrow then college goers 2023 uh, they will be writing the examination for that also you have a two year extensive batch and that is also starting tomorrow and there is i hope the students know here there is one new type of subscription that is known as iconic subscription on academy and when you take the iconic subscription you are entitled to some additional benefits like you will get a personal mentor you will be uh, thoroughly always you will be with in connection with him or her so you will be getting your answers corrected you can you will get you can avail the mains test series here so these few things that is personal coach mains test series continuous guidance these are not available on the uh plus course general plus course so for that you have to subscribe the an academy iconic subscription now for iconic subscription there is going to be a price rise very soon so those who are interested to take it you can take the advantage before the price rise now those who want to subscribe this is the general fee structure of an academy for 6 month this is the fee 12 months it's 49500 2 years batch it is 72000 but if you use my referral code dinesh rt10 you can avail a discount of a huge 10% that means your 2 years fee which is 72000 it will become 64800 your fee which is 49500 will become 44550 so this is the referral code you can use even those students who are first timers on an academy they can use this referral code dinesh rt10 as unlock code to add to enter into the free classes that is provided by an academy let us continue with the classes now as we have already discussed the class was on world climatic regions which is part of climatology we have already completed these sections in various classes over an academy platform so if you want to attend these classes you can join an academy you can or you can uh, just visit the free lectures i have more than 100 classes covered over free lectures you can get all these lack classes there now this was the topic we were dealing with we discussed that there are around 13 world climatic regions that we will be discussing again a small question there can be certain confusions if the students are watching this for the first time the thing is this world climatic topic with respect to our syllabus is dealt in details in the book known as g c leong it's a very famous book we all know that right it's a physical certificate course on g c leong so this book handles this huge topic 
now when you see this book uh, the numbers will not be matching here the names will not be matching perfectly reason is some additions are done in this particular slide so it is perfectly fine that you follow these 13 world climatic regions or if you take the uh, gc leong book you will be getting around 10 to 11 world climatic regions things are similar only thing is i have added some extra this one is extra and uh, there is some modifications in this belt that is all both are perfectly fine there is only slight variations you can follow any of them so i will be following this structure and I hope you remember last class what did I say we are considering this block as a continent and we are dividing this continental block based on latitudes and longitudes. How are we dividing this continental block based on latitude can you see 0 to 10 30 45 up to pole we have divided it into number of divisions longitudinally can i say i am dividing my continent into three different parts one is the coastline the land masses which are nearer to the sea toward which have sea towards or ocean towards the east or i can say the landmass which is present on the western side of the ocean what is this landmass this landmass i can say it is the landmass which is present towards the eastern side of the ocean on the west this side you can say you will be having an ocean this side you will be having ocean so on the eastern side of ocean you have a land or similar or what can i say if this is a continent this is the western side of continent adjacent to ocean this is the eastern side of continent adjacent to ocean in between it is your i can say continental landmass which is too much towards the interior so now we have also divided that these world 13 climatic regions we have divided them under few categories what are they few what are those few categories first is basically two divisions and those two divisions says some are thermally induced climatic regions some are dynamically induced climatic region so one two three and four the black colored one they are thermally induced climatic regions we have discussed and five to thirteen the region in between they are dynamically induced climatic regions so this much we have covered we have covered thermally induced uh, how they are thermally induced polar areas they receive less sunlight so they are cold equatorial area receive more sunlight so they are warmer so that's why we said they are thermally induced pressure well thermally induced climatic regions what is dynamically induced pressure by climatic regions dynamically induced climatic regions are those climatic regions which are influenced by the permanent winds for example we have talked about there are certain climatic regions which are influenced by trade winds which are influenced by trade winds or easterlies which are they we have discussed that in the last class in the present figure that we will be talking about this one five six seven and we have one more here that is known as china type that is china type so these four are trade wind regulated pressure belt we have discussed that you can see it here we have just discussed this trade wind regulated climatic regions it is your five six seven and eight monsoonal type savanna type tropical desert type and china type and why does that happen we have explained because trade wind comes from this side and it leaves out from this side so this is the wettest region and this is the driest region so we have discussed that next is we have discussed what is we were discussing we have to start from this topic that is what are westerlies are regulated climatic regions so if i say what is westerlies regulated climatic region see this is my westerly wind this is my westerly wind i can say this is also my westerly wind why, but why two figures the reason for two figure is we know that the pressure belt keeps on shifting up and down with respect to the apparent movement of the sun so if it is summer season what happens the sun moves towards north accordingly the entire pressure belt keeps on shifting towards north so that is why my subtropical high pressure system it has moved northward so if subtropical high pressure system has no, moved northward can i say the entire wind system will northward will move northward and if the wind system moves northward ideally during winter season winter season this month this was my westerlies now my westerlies has reached here so which are my westerlies regulated world climatic regions i can say 10 11 12 and 13 here also i can say 10 11 12 and 13 how can i say they are westerlies regulated climatic season check what happens here is first let us start with 10 now if you don't understand this blocks clearly let me just give you a small clarification here you can just see this one is my ocean this one is my ocean okay so this one is my ocean so this is the water body 
and this is my uh, let me just change the color here this one is my first continent this one is a continent here and this one is another continent this one is another continent so what is the situation here we know that all the continents are generally bound by oceans from different side this side we have ocean can i say this side also we have ocean similarly can i say this side also we have ocean so that is how the continents are the continents are bound by oceans on both the sides now during winter season what did we say we clearly mentioned that our subtropical high pressure belt is towards much towards south when subtropical high pressure belt is towards south can you see the wind will be entering into the 10th location what is the 10th location let us see the name if you remember this is your 10th one that is your mediterranean climate so what can i say here can i say during winter season what happens in the mediterranean region the moist moisture laden wind from the water body that is from the ocean enters into the land so that is what is happening during winter so during winter can i say my 10th number climatic region that is mediterranean climatic region will get sufficient amount of rainfall why because the moisture from the ocean is entering into the mediterranean location so i will be getting rainfall here so that is the simplest concept i can say next when i said during summer the entire pressure belt moves up you can see subtropical high pressure belt has also moved up now as the high pressure belt has moved up the wind instead of reaching at 10 can i say it will reach at 13 right so can i say during summer season my 13th location which is known as the british type of climate it will receive good amount of rainfall during summer season but one more small explanation is here you can check it here during winter season also some of the wind from here will enter here some of the wind from here will enter here i'm not saying you will get a strong wind inflow here no strong wind inflow is during this time when it is summer but during winter also some of the wind from subtropical high will this lower subtropical high will also be reaching here that means my 13th location that is british type of climate will receive some amount of rainfall during winter and it will receive more amount of rainfall during summer that means 13th climatic region that is world climatic regions it gets rainfall throughout the year you have well distributed rainfall in this 13th region so can i say when you have sufficient amount of water full of greenery and all the and the latitude is below 60 degree can i say this will be one of the best area to habit for habitation or living so that's why when we study the world climatic region we will understand the british type of climate is a best time of best type of climate that people prefer to live it is very good type of comfortable type of climatic situations here clear moving further we have also mentioned that 12 and 13 is roughly world climatic regions regulated by westerlies now do you remember when we discussed easterlies the wind which is moving into this land that is my monsoonal land after some time will reach here when it reaches here its uh, moisture content decreases so you receive very less amount of rainfall here so that's why we are getting savanna grassland here if you remember these things i have taken this in the last class similarly here can i say the wind after entering here can i say the wind will enter into this belt that is 12 so similar to savanna can i say in 12th region also i will be getting relatively less amount of rainfall so if i am getting relatively less amount of rainfall here can i say i won't get forest here so this is also i will be developing it as grassland so this area will also be grassland and what type of grassland they are steppy grassland they are known as steppy grassland now if you want to know what is the difference between 12 and this particular thing that is 6 this was 6 right between that is uh, steppy grassland and savanna grassland there is a minor difference savanna grassland is first thing is in a warmer belt steppy grassland is in a colder belt 
Next thing, if I want to compare the type of grasses, you will see that when we study them in details, the savanna, in the savanna grassland, the grasses are very long and less nutritious grasses. While the grasses that you get in the steppes grassland, they are very small, beautiful and I can say highly nutritious grassland. So these areas are very good for, I can say, herders and all domestic animals and all but these areas yes, are generally good for wild animals and all so that is what there are slight differences in this world climatic regions so 13 and 14, uh, 12 10 11, 12 and 13 done and when i talk about 11 11 as i said in the last class it is known as laurasian type of climate which is a slightly transition belt between the area which is above what is above i will say that as taiga we will explain that in details so taiga and this one is china type this is a climatic region which is i can say in a transition belt between these two you will get the characteristics of this you will also get the characteristics of this now with respect to westerlies if you ask me i can say there will be very less amount of moisture reaching here but can i say this side is a coastline so basically it is much higher so sometimes you have this polar wind coming over this area so as a result of that you can get some rainfall and all these particular things here so this is my 11 so what did we study up to now if i want to just conclude few things till now can i say we have studied equatorial climatic region polar climatic region tundra climatic region and taiga climatic region first four they are thermally induced pressure belt next let me let me change the color then we dealt with next four which were the next four next four of four were monsoonal tropical monsoonal climate savanna climate tropical desert climate and china type of climate these four we discussed that they are trade wind regulated climatic regions next what is the next four next four that is from here 10th one 11th one laurasian climate steppe climate and british type climate do you remember we discussed that they are westerlies regulated climatic region then what about the last one one is left there so the last one that is left there i can say let me change the color here so which color shall i take yes chalo. so last one this one so what about this guy the red ones you can see here are world climatic regions associated with trade winds the green ones associated with world climatic regions uh, associated with westerlies what about ninth one so please remember ninth one is a world climatic region associated by the effect of both the trade winds as well as the westerlies how check we are talking about this region or we are talking about this region can you see during winter what is happening the wind after entering 10 can i say whatever is left will reach at 9 through here whatever is left will reach at 9 so 9 is receiving some amount of wind from the westerlies clear i repeat 9 is receiving some amount of wind from the westerlies during which season during winter season so in a way it is affected by the winter winds westerlies wind but please remember okay i will come to that point after some time and second thing let me show this tip what is happening during summer season can you see the east uh, the wind that is easterly this one is easterly it is entering the china type region so can i say after creating rainfall or moisture in the china uh, after reaching the after the wind reaches the china type of climate can i say the wind will pass into this ninth region again that means this trade wind is also reaching the ninth region this trade wind is also reaching the ninth region after creating uh, rainfall and precipitation in the eighth region so what is happening at 9 see at during winter season slight amount of westerlies is entering at 9 after passing through 10 similarly during summer season slight amount of wind is reaching 9 after passing through 8 that means on both the sides of 9 suppose this is my 9 on this side i have a barrier that barrier can be 8 and on this side i have a barrier that can be 10 what is this 8 and 10 8 is my china type of climate 10 is my i can say mediterranean type of climate so at 9 the wind has to enter from two directions after passing through 8 and 9 so can i say the moisture that will reach at 9 will be relatively much lesser because you don't have advancement of moisture into 9 
at nine moisture enters only after creating rainfall in other areas so can i say nine will be relatively much drier and that is why we will call nine as mid latitudinal desert it is relatively much drier why mid latitudinal because it is not at the lower latitude see up to 30 degree we called it tropical desert no but this one is above that 30 to 45 degree so that is why we will call it they are mid latitudinal desert so these are the 13 world climatic regions that we have discussed with respect to the direction of wind finally i'm concluding how they are developed the first four that is written in black color equatorial polar tundra and taiga they are developed because of thermal regions next 5 to 13 all written in blue color the area in between the nine climatic regions they are all dynamically induced pressure bells which are regulated or developed because of different types of wind out of that we have also discussed number five six seven and eight that is monsoonal savanna desert and china type are developed because of trade winds while the next four 10 11 12 and 13 the green colored ones they are developed based on the westerly wind so 5 6 7 8 easterly regulated climatic regions 8 uh, 10 11 12 13 westerly regulated climatic regions one is left in between that is my mid latitudinal desert which we have understood that it is regulated by both trade winds and westerlies good morning sriari good morning right so that is how ninth climatic region is regulated so this is how the world climatic regions has been developed i hope things are very clear if you have any doubts in between you can ask so before moving further a small announcement so those who want to experience the plus classes for free i can see you can get the experience of plus classes for free you can uh, an academy is provided providing us free special classes which is one hour live classes various faculties take i also take this month i will be having around five special classes which is already scheduled you can visit my an academy profile and the classes will be starting from today evening 7 30 right and we have free test series conducted by an academy and live quizzes are there so to unlock all these experiences for free you can use my referral code dinesh rt10 on the an academy platform so that you get free access to these particular things so there is an academy combat that is going to be today at 11 p 11 am so participate it you can get exciting prices over that then this is a free initiative by an academy that is current affairs test daily t20 right there are 20 there will be 20 questions and you will be getting the answers so it's for your practice best for the examination i will advise you guide guys to regularly follow that so these are the various other free platforms an academy is providing the present youtube uh, classes that we are taking and you have telegram channel you can follow it here so that you can get regular updates and the pdf notes of various classes so these are the free things provided by an academy and don't follow don't forget to use my referral code to enter an academy profile an academy and to subscribe the plus courses that is dinesh rt 10 next is we will be we are going to start with the individual study of this world climatic regions now before moving into the individual studies what i do is i just make you slightly familiarize with how these different climatic regions look like what are their different names so we will just slightly go through these particular things then gradually we will start with this particular thing so what are these different climatic regions there are 13 world, world climatic regions we are going to see what are their different names and how they looks like that is only things we are going to see today that is we will just about i can say we can just feel how these climatic regions will be looking like that is what we are going to do first one is the equatorial climatic region what is equatorial climatic region another names for equatorial climatic region it is also referred as hot and wet equatorial climatic region it is simply known as hot and wet region why it is near equator you have huge amount of insulation temperature is very high excessive evaporation excessive precipitation so hot and wet equatorial rainforest because this is the area where you develop rainforest or evergreen forest so similarly equatorial evergreen forest then next is tropical moist broadleaf forest why 
tropical it's in tropical area it is a moist area where you have excessive rainfall and the areas where you excessive rainfall we have excessive rainfall generally the leaves of trees will be broadleaf trees so moist broadleaf forest then lowland equatorial evergreen forest these are the different names that we sometimes use for the same region that is equatorial climatic region i hope you remember the location which is equatorial region i'm talking about this region which is present in all the continents somewhere in between 0 to 10 degree latitude so we are talking about north and south both so we are talking about this region equatorial region how does they look like they are dense forest as we have discussed so it is thickly covered forest area so can you see the canopy thickness of forest is it is so huge i can say inside there will not be much penetration of light it will be very relatively dark in the daytime also because entire canopy is covering the forest so that is why that is how it happens in this particular region equatorial region so just have a look have a feel of this region just understand equatorial region will be dense forest you won't be easily able to walk over these particular locations just remember that now more details we will take it when we start with the individual climatic regions second region we will talk about the polar region i hope you remember which is polar region i will just show you give me a second can you see this one this one is our polar region this one that is 80 to 90 degree so can i say this region is developed because of lack of insulation right sunlight is less it is also known as arctic climate it is also known as antarctic climate so southern hemisphere antarctic climate northern hemisphere arctic climate so how does it look like we know that there is no sunlight it's a polar area just north pole and south pole so entire area will be i can say covered with glacier 24 by 7 365 days these are the areas which are having i can say perma frost condition these are the areas we can say that is having perma frost condition so this is the speciality of this particular region so do you have vegetations and animals generally very rare so we will discuss about this region again when we come in detail one so this is how it looks like you won't see any vegetations but definitely there are some amounts of small animals and all we'll discuss about that when we deal with individually next is tundra or subpolar climate that is the another name what is tundra region let me just show you the location see it is just below my polar region the area between i can say 70 degree to 80 degree latitude this area is known as tundra climate so can i say the temp the harshness of climate here will be slightly lesser than here that is can i say three is a little bit better than two slightly more amount of sunlight slightly more warmer than two so in that case can i say this uh, during my short summer season there will be melting of ice and snow as a result of that there can be growth of some small grasses like mosses lichen and all these particular thing slight or i can say there will be short duration of summer maybe one month two months or maximum three months this short duration of summer we can see much activity here that is life becomes active here because you have you might have heard about migratory birds they will come into these areas insects small insects they will come into these areas so life slightly becomes active in this area during the summer season which is very short lived so we'll discuss about that thing one more type i will simultaneously discuss that is alpine tundra that is tundra itself if it is getting we are getting it in the mountainous locations we will be calling it alpine tundra for example in the himalayan regions we can get alpine tundra as we move higher and higher that means himalayas which are at the lower latitude there also we can get tundra but that is that will be known as specifically alpine tundra next third type of climate taiga climatic region what is taiga this one even 10 degree more lower that is we are must just moving away from the pole 70 to 60 degree that is taiga so what did we see here no vegetation almost no vegetation i can say permanently frozen here during summer slight amount of growth or life becomes active so can i say here slightly even more activity of life can i say here and there i can see some trees here definitely this area is also near to pole the, the trees that will i will be getting it here basically they will be conical basically they will be conical so we get coniferous trees here so this this is how your taiga looks like so these are reindeers and all you will get all these particular things these are conical trees and all which can survive this snowfall and all 
So yes, you will have some Moses lichens, all these particular things that you get in Tundra. Apart from that, you will also get some amount of trees and all these particular thing. Huh, it is related to mountain. It is related to mountain. Okay, Sri Hari. Yes, it is related to mountain. And what are the different names that we give to this particular taiga, taiga climatic regions? Different names are warm, subpolar region. What was the previous one? Tundra. It was just subpolar region. Here, slightly warm, warmness increases. So, warm subpolar region. It is also known as subarctic climate. It is also known as boreal climate, Siberian climate, or, or I can call it cool temperate continental climate. So please remember these names can be important. Sometimes they can just in your prelims if they ask some other name apart from taiga if they ask boreal or Siberian you must know that they are one and the same. So these are the this is how it looks like. So what did we do today is we have just got the feel of the first four climatic regions which are thermally regulated. What were they? They were equatorial climate which is warm and wet then polar climate which is very cold and permanently for frozen tundra slight amount of activity of life during short summer taiga i can say you have even more activity of life with some conical trees here and there so life is changing gradually from one location to another so that is my first four that is uh, i can say thermally induced world climatic regions now rest these things that is we can say up from 5 to 13 we will discuss it in the next class and in the next class itself what we will be doing is we will be starting with the explanation of equatorial climate now today's class i'm not explaining it i'm just giving you a feel of how these locations look like so that when we enter there you can understand things very well so from 5 to 13 we will be continuing that in the next class so before winding up so if you like my profile, like my classes, you can follow me on my Anacademy profile. This is my profile here. Now, if anybody of you is interested to subscribe to the Anacademy Plus courses, you can use my referral code DineshRT10. Or if anybody of you are first time for the first time using the Anacademy app to enter into the free live classes section, you will require an unlock code and you can use my same unlock code that is DineshRT10. So please remember this one I have already explained that there is going to be a price rike in the iconic subscription which gives you a personal coach or mentor main test series on all other benefits. So if you want to subscribe take the benefit now before the price rise and yes you all know that there is 10% discount if you uh, subscribe to the Anacademy plus courses using my referral code. So those who are interested to subscribe, you can use my referral code DineshRT10 to avail discount of 10% over various time periods. So that is all about this class. We will continue from here where we have left in the coming classes. Okay. Thank you. I hope things are very clear. So see you in the next class. Till then, bye, take care and stay safe.